Welcome to the Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon Podcast. I am your host, Captain Matt, <clears throat> and today we're talking how to buy a used boat in the state of Wisconsin. Every state has their own uniquenesses when it comes to buying boats, Wisconsin being one of the, the larger uh, top five boating states in the country, according to, uh, to some records. And we want to talk about what's going on in Wisconsin. As always, we're brought to you by Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon Toolkit, which you can grab a free copy at BoatBuyerSecretWeapon.com slash toolkit. As we go through today, we're going to talk about how to spot a scam in Wisconsin. Because it's such a large boating community, there are a lot of people out there trying to pull scams. Um, common for sale by owner issues to avoid. Things that the seller may know and not tell you, or things that they just may not be aware of that we're going to help you find them so that you can avoid them. Options to consider. The biggest one, in my opinion, when you're buying a used boat, how to avoid someone else's headache, must do inspections before buying, finance and insurance tips, and then a free gift at the end of the video, probably 20, 25, maybe 30 minutes as we go into it. One in seven boats for sale. This was a, a research study that was done on thousands of boats listed for sale a couple of years ago. One in seven had a, was a scam or had an outright issue. So the issue being maybe a titling issue, um, an outright scam being somebody that was selling the boat, it wasn't theirs to sell, or there was really no boat. They just went out, grabbed a picture off a of boat trader, put it there for sale, put their contact information. It was a real boat, but the seller was bogus and just trying to scam you out of your money. But others were real legitimate boats, real legitimate sellers, but there were some sort of issue that made the boat less valuable. Uh, maybe it, it had been salvaged uh, by an insurance company, uh, totaled out. Maybe there were some mismatches on the title. Uh, maybe the, the boat was or the, the boat was legit, but the motor was stolen. A lot of different things that can happen, and I want to help you avoid those. So here are some signs that there might be some funny business going on on a boat that you're looking at. The first one, these are, and these are red flags. These aren't, hey, if you see one of them, go running and screaming. Um, no, it means slow down, make sure everything else is in line, and make sure you're making a smart decision. The first one is they won't allow any phone contact. Everything's got to be by email, um, and when they do send emails, there's poor grammar, and um, it, it just it doesn't sound like somebody that would really be selling the boat. Now, again, some people may just not want to talk to somebody unless they've got somebody that's serious about buying the boat, and then at a certain point, they'll get on the phone and have a conversation or meet face-to-face. -face. Uh, but no phone contact is, is one that is a, a red flag. When they start asking for money up front before you're ready to buy the boat, hey, send me $500 and I'll lock this boat in for you, and then we can take care of everything later. Well, that's another red flag. Um, even if they offer, hey, here's an escrow service. Just send it to this escrow service, and then you can you know it's legit. There's been situations where these escrow services have been set up as a, a phony front where it's really just them um, that set up a, a little PayPal account or something and that escrow service goes right to them and there's really no escrow service behind the website. So if you do want to get in that situation, maybe it's out of state and um, you are, you're in Wisconsin and you're, you're buying a boat from, from out, of, out of state, um, go ahead and you select the escrow company escrow.com could be one that's a, a, a legitimate provider for you. They're one of the largest in the country, and that could be a way to go to avoid getting, um, getting taken on that little scam. If they won't allow you to inspect the boat. Now, there are people that I know that have bought a boat sight unseen and have come out great. They bought a, a great boat, and they, they're very happy with it, and they've had it for years. However, if they won't allow you to inspect the boat, it should be a red flag for you to slow down and figure out, hey, is this something that I really should move forward with? If there's no title, now remember, a boat, motor, and a trailer can have a title. So if you have an outboard engine, that has its own title. The boat has its own engine. The trailer has its own, uh, the boat has its own engine. The boat has its own title. The trailer has its own title and registration. Now, if those don't all match, and you go to, you buy it, you exchange the money, and you go to get the registration taken care of, guess what? They may say, no, we can't register it this way. 
you've got to go get this and that paperwork, or we got to find we've got to find a bill of sale. And unfortunately, once that money has changed hands, sellers are a lot less willing and motivated to get you the paperwork that they need. Everything, even if everything's on the up and up, even if there's no funny business going on, there could be some issues there. Now, if there is some funny business going on, the the it's got a salvage title. Uh, there was a major insurance claim that wasn't disclosed. Um, the it's not really theirs to be selling. Um, the you know there's a, a some stolen property involved. Then you've got some serious issues that you need to be aware of. It has water damage because the boat has sank or or there's been you know maybe the drain plug got left in it and it rained in and it, it filled up with water. Guess what? That could cause some major issues for you down the line. Uh, certainly can devalue the boat. Um, there are ways that you can you can tell on some of these uh, that uh, can avoid that risk. And they won't allow you to do a sea trial. A sea trial being an on-water demo, a test drive, if you will. If they're not uh, willing to allow you to get on the water, um, that might be a red flag. Now, if it's you know you're in um, you're in Milwaukee and it's it's uh, December, well, you may not really have the option to do a sea trial, but you want to you want to do as much as you can to avoid an issue or a scam. Now in Wisconsin, you've got a 5% sales tax. Depending on your county, you may have another half a percent county sales tax if that's applicable in your area. And you may also have a baseball stadium tax if the boat is customarily kept in Milwaukee, uh, Racine, Washington, or other counties, uh, another 10% or 0.1%, one tenth of a percent baseball stadium tax to be paid. Uh, registration fees 22 to 105 dollars depending on the length and type of the boat and you can go get more details at dnr.wi.gov slash permits registration boats registration fees html this is not legal or tax advice this is just putting everything into one place so it makes buying a boat easier for you and you can go verify and these may change over time now if you are born after January, on or after January 1st, 1989, you are required to have a boater safety course before operating a boat. You can go to uh, dnr.wi.gov slash topic slash boat, and they will give you more details, options on where to take your safe boater course and get your certificate. So be aware of that if you are born January 1st, 89 or after. Now, when you are buying a boat, First choice is, what type of boat are you looking to buy? A deck boat, a bow rider, a pontoon, a cruiser, aluminum fishing boat, a bass boat, whatever type it is. We've got videos that I'm going to reference as we go through here because this is strictly for Wisconsin. But if you're a first-time boater and you're not really sure what you're looking for, go and check out our other videos, our other resources at BoatBuyerSecretWeapon.com on our YouTube channel and check out the first time Boat Buyer series. It's a two part series. We go in depth into everything that you could possibly want to know about buying a boat. And that is a great source for you to help you find out the right style. We've also got a video on what power supply is right for you. An outboard, a stern drive, uh, an inboard, or a jet drive. Um, that's a super popular video. We just got an email from a guy saying, hey, we decided because of your videos on a jet boat, we think that's the right one for us. I've got some questions. Can you help me out? These videos have been incredibly valuable for us. Um, he left me some comments, sent me a big long email, and we always appreciate that. That's what this information is for, is to be helpful for you. And we would love your comments and a quick like and definitely subscribe to the channel. But you can check out that video um, if you're trying to determine what is the right power source for you. Now, options. There are some options that once you buy the boat, that option is the option you have. So a sun pad or a walkthrough. You can see that little arrow pointing to the walkthrough. If you buy a walkthrough boat, it's always a walkthrough. You're not going to be able to change it to a sun pad. Now, there are other options like a bimini top, canvas cover, wakeboard tower that you can add after the fact. Here's what I want you to know. Here's why I bring up these options. is because a bimini top can be added, but it can be... $500, $700, $2,000, depending on the size and type of the boat, if you have the frame or not. So if you're comparing two boats, one has a bimini and one doesn't, understand that the one with the bimini, even if it's more expensive, could actually be the cheaper option for you. 
Um, the canvas cover, $500 to $2,000, depending on the type of cover that you're looking at. A wakeboard tower, on the cheap end, $2,500, more likely five, seven. $10,000 to put a, a wakeboard tower on a boat and a wakeboard tower that was put on when the boat was built at the factory is way more um, sturdy, stable, um, valuable, in my opinion, than an aftermarket wakeboard tower that you would put on a boat uh, because it can it's difficult to get them on. It can cause cracking in the fiberglass. It can cause cracking in the gel coat. Um, it could void a warranty if there's still warranty on the boat. So it's important to know, yes, we can add these things, but we need to know about what the cost is going to be so that we can make a smart decision. The head compartment, uh, toilet porta potty, you may be able to add it. If it's already got the compartment, you can stick a porta potty in there. Um, however, if it doesn't have the compartment, then it's, it's uh, nearly impossible to add that. Inspections. Now, once you've selected the boat, this is the right boat. Um, you know, we're, we're, really on the boat we're doing on inspection the first thing you want to check is does it have a sturdy floor boats that were built in the early 90s um 90s and 2000s they were still using uh plywood floors which would get wet would start to rot over time and right now if you're looking at a 90s boat or an early 2000 boat if it has that plywood floor there's the chance that it's got some rot in it so what i want you to do is step in that boat bounce up in the bow by the seats by the seat pedestals by the ski locker in the transom where you get on and on the boat and you want to just make sure that all of that is strong uh, and sturdy and not spongy it can be a very expensive messy difficult to fix especially if that rod's gotten down into the stringers you could buy a boat dig in and realize that you've got a big giant expensive mess on your hands i don't want that for you um, if it's a fiberglass bottom you want to check crawl under that boat check the bottom are there are there blisters? Um, are there any big gouges? Anything that you need to be aware of? Here is my overriding um, philosophy on buying a used boat is I want to do a thorough inspection so I know everything that could possibly be wrong with this boat. Not because I'm, I want a reason to not buy it, but because I want to know what I have so I can make a smart, informed decision on is the price that they're asking, is the price I'm able to negotiate to a valuable price for me. And that's why I want you to go through the electronics, the stereo system, the lights, the gauges, the switches, the upholstery, the canvas, the hatches, the latches, the wiring, check for corrosion. All of those things are important to get up into the compartments, look under the helm, uh, get into every um, little nook and cranny of that boat and make sure that things are in good shape. If it's an older boat, um, you want to check that wiring. Wiring issues can be one, very frustrating to pin down, two, very expensive to pin down, and can be very uh, difficult to fix if there is a problem with some wiring. So you want to check that before you make your investment. Also, you want to ask the question, how old's the fuel? When's the last time this boat's been run? Fuel can go bad over time, especially if it's ethanol. Um, so fuel that's a year or two old, maybe it's bad and you may have to pump it out. If it's three or four years old, you definitely want to pump it out before you run it because it can cause some major issues. You want to ask the last time it's ran because a mechanical thing like a boat engine needs to be run periodically. If it's been sitting up in the barn and it looks great, exterior's great, interior's in perfect condition, it's got super low hours and you're like, man, this is the find of the century. But if that engine's been sitting and hasn't been cranked for five years, guess what? There's probably a lot of things that need to be replaced, repaired on that engine. Uh, seals could be going bad, and you could have yourself a big, giant money pit. So ask those questions so you know. Once you've got through there and you say, hey, this is a boat that we really like. The price seems right for the condition it's in. Now it's time to get it inspected to make sure that the engine, which is one of the most valuable pieces of a boat, Usually 50% or so of the total value of the boat, the older the boat, the more value that engine has because they're very expensive to replace on a, you know, a basic stern drive, six to eight, nine, ten thousand dollars depending on the size of it, um, to replace it. And outboard can be very expensive as well to repower. So you want to find out the engine hours. Check out when the oil and fluids in the battery, when's the last time those have been, been changed, the impeller. Um, and then check them yourself. Make sure you pull that dipstick out and check to see if that oil is fresh, if it's burnt up and, and dirty. 
Um, check the compression. This is the most important check um, that you can do. The most important inspection you can do when you're buying a used powerboat is to check that compression. Is that engine firing as strong as it was when it was first produced, first on the water? Compression is um, the strength of each cylinder uh, of that engine that's firing. So the the spec new may be 120 PSI uh, per cylinder. So you get a little compression gauge that costs 20 bucks at Amazon. There's a link down in the YouTube notes that you can you can get that. And um, you just hook it up, you crank it, and it will give you the pressure of that cylinder. If everything's 120 across every cylinder, great. The engine's firing as strong as it was when it was new. If you find that one cylinder is low, then you know you've got a major issue in a boat that you probably want to walk away from. If you're not competent to do it yourself, you can hire somebody to do it. 100, 200 bucks to do a compression chest, depending on where you are and what techs are charging in your area. But a very um, small amount to pay when it comes to uh, walking away from a problem that is going to leave you with a boat with uh, very, very little value. Uh, prop condition, you want to check that prop um, for you know any gouges, any dings, any anything in the prop. You also want to spin it and make sure that prop is spinning straight that there's no um, issue with the prop shaft on the drive. The drive condition, if it's a stern drive, you want to check that, that drive, make sure that there's no corrosion going on. Um, check those bellows if it's been left in the water and make sure that everything is soft and supple as you look at that. We're working on a video where we're actually going to show you this live and in person so you can check it um, and see exactly as we do it with you. So you want to make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, comment, leave questions if you have any. Uh, we always love those so we can make better content as we go forward. Now, once you've checked the engine, you say, hey, let's get this boat on the water make sure that it does what it's supposed to do and make sure this is a boat that we're going to we're going to buy you want to start it cold if you can which means you're the first one that started it for the day go out start that engine listen to it listen to it in idle let it just sit at the dock for a couple of minutes how does it sound is it spitting and sputtering and, and almost dying or is it is it over idling and it's that idles way too high or does it sound just about right uh, once you've idled for a while uh, undo the lines Head out to open water and go from idle to wide open throttle and run it wide open for a couple of minutes and listen to that boat. Does it just take off, shoot out of the water, or does it kind of spit and sputter and then go? Um, does, does anything sound off? Go wide open throttle for a couple of minutes and then bring it back to about three quarters throttle and let's do some turns. Check how that steering handles. Um, again, you want to be safe. You want to make, I'm assuming you're a competent driver. If you're not, get somebody that is a competent driver as you do these maneuvers. Um, if three quarters throttles too fast on the body of water you're at to do these turns, then come back even further. But do them at a reasonable speed. Turn left, turn right, port and starboard, and feel how it feels. Is it turning smoothly? Is there any indication that maybe the steering cable needs to be replaced? Then come back, adjust the trim if it's equipped with a trim motor. Um, adjust that trim up and down. How does it sound? How does it handle? What are the characteristics? When does it start to cavitate? Then, once you've done that, you want to come back, stop in the middle of the water, in neutral, just come to a standstill, and then you want to go in gear and out of gear. So forward, one, two, three, neutral, one, two, three. Reverse, one, two, three, neutral, one, two, three. Forward, one, two, three, neutral, one, two, three. And you're listening to the sound, how it shifts. Is it shifting smoothly? Is it chunking in gear? Does it sound like something's off? Now, some of the drives, especially stern drives, might make a little clunk as it goes in and out of gear. Um, so you're, you're listening for anything that's off. And if it is off, look into it further and find out. Maybe that's normal uh, for a Mercruiser engine to have that little bit of a chunk. Maybe it's not. You want to, how smoothly is it? Does that shift cable need to be changed if it has a shift cable? And if it's not a, a digital throttle and shift. And then if it's an outboard, you want to look for that water spitting out of the engine. Um, if you're sitting at idle, it may just be dribbling out. If you are uh, underway, it should be a nice steady flow. That can be an indication of an impeller needing to be changed. My recommendation to you, unless the impeller, the oil and gear lube, and the battery have been changed recently within the last year or so, I would suggest just starting out fresh 
so you know exactly what you've got in your first couple of times out. You're not left stranded in your new boat. Just go and make that investment and start out uh, with that boat being well maintained. Now, if you have a trailer on the boat, there's a whole video on trailers, and it's something if you are looking at a trailer, you want to watch that because there's a lot of unknowns about trailers that surprise people and can catch them off guard. But if you do have a boat with the trailer, while you're doing the demo is the right time to inspect the trailer when that boat is off the trailer. You want to check the winch stand, the straps, the lights, the bunks, the axles, and the bearings. If your bearings aren't aren't in good condition, you can be left on the side of the road and, and burn, up the, um, burn up the bearings and have an expensive repair. The tires, trailer tires, 100, 150 bucks per tire, depending on the size of the tires, but they can go bad over time. They can go bad just by sitting and getting dry rot or flat spots, and you don't want to be pulling out with your new boat and blow a tire. It's happened time and time and time again because people don't even think about the trailer tire. They don't even think about the trailer as a whole. Just say, hey, the boat's great, let's move, um, but take some time to look at that trailer. And again, check out the video on trailers because that gets into all the detail. Financing, there's a whole video on financing and insurance, which we'll talk about next. But if you're looking at a used boat, local credit, credit unions are a great option. Uh, if you're buying from a dealer, check with the dealer's lender. Um, they're, they can be a, a very good source for you. And then check marine lenders as well. Local and national banks, probably the least attractive option for most people. Um, but uh, but find the option that works for you. You can go to BoatBuyerSecretWeapon.com and find some financing options that you may want to check out. Insurance. For most pleasure boats in, in Wisconsin, $500 to $1,200 per year. The faster the boat, the more expensive the boat. You may be a little bit higher than that. Um, but there's another video on insurance. There's actually, if you're smart about the insurance you choose, you can oftentimes get better coverage for a lower premium uh, when you select the right insurance. So you want to check that video out and you can also get a quote from a, a provider that we have a relationship with that um, get the quote and pick the policy and the premium that's right for you. Don't necessarily just go to your homeowner's insurance company because that likely is the least attractive option. Um, boat history report. We talked about all the scams and the issues that can be out there, the bad titling, um, the insurance salvage titles uh, and, and major claims. There's a company called Boat History Report that for, I think, for 50 bucks, you can get a, a copy of the history for any boat and motor. They, they can show you any claims that have been filed. Uh, they access a bunch of different databases, and if they find anything, they give you the report. And um, it, it's a, a great insurance policy that you don't get in a situation where you buy a boat that has a major issue. And again, for 50 bucks, I think it's a, a really smart investment. Worst case is, Everything's clear and you know you're in good shape. Best case is it saves you from buying a boat that is going to have some major issues with you. There's a link at the website and there is a link in the notes below the video. We mentioned there was a, a special gift for you. You can get a copy of the Boat Buyer Secret Weapon Toolkit. It's a toolkit that a number of people that have recently sent us notes and, and messages saying the toolkit has been hugely valuable. It's been downloaded hundreds and hundreds of times at this point. Um, help you buy the right boat at the best price. Demo a boat the right way. Must ask questions for dealers and private sellers. How to maximize your trades. How to get the best boat loan and best boat insurance. And much, much more. Um, we keep adding to this toolkit uh, as we get additional information from people saying, hey, it would be nice to know this. And we may add a piece to it. And you can get the most recent version, BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com slash toolkit. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave us a comment. We would love to hear from you. Um, let us know what you thought. Let us know any questions that you have. And also YouTube has recommended a couple of videos for you that may be helpful for your situation. You may find interesting. So check those out. Um, like, subscribe, comment. We'd appreciate it. And don't forget to pick up your Boat Buyers Secret Weapon Toolkit at BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com slash toolkit. Thanks a lot. And don't forget, life truly is better on a boat. Take care, everybody.